apparently it's not only the white man that figured out that religion is the best way to enslave an average african man even the asians have also keyed into the religion crazy attitude of africans as a way into the african man's pocket for those that have 50 euros rush forward for those that have 50 euros 50 euros quickly rush forward rush forward for those that have 50 euros rush out quickly 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 for those that have 50 euros and if you don't have 50 euros rush with 20 euros quickly quickly come up put it in the hand quickly karabo shantala baba send down fire oh holy blue to 20 euros fast fast <laughs> oh money na money ah wait to musa no go see forget ah jesus <laughs> don't get me wrong there is absolutely nothing wrong with having a foreigner establish church businesses in africa trust me there is nothing wrong if africa was a developed continent if everything was going all right you know if everything just did okay everything did smooth if african leaders were competent honest and morally upright there is nothing wrong with an asian man or a foreigner generally running a church in african countries if only africans were not being treated very badly around the world especially in asia so you see there is nothing wrong with pursuing your religious ambitions if it's not just another money making venture to which the african people have continued to be blind to i don't know what is wrong with africans though Africans have been tagged as the most religious people on earth and also the most backward continent, most corrupt continent or lawless continents where everyone and anyone can just come and do what they like. A continent where the people build churches and mosques instead of investing in businesses, factories, schools, hospitals, industries. You get a continent that every other continent is scrambling for except its own people. Welcome. The topic of discussion is not why Africans are so religious. Umba. That has been discussed so much over the years and I guess people are tired of talking already. After all, it's been proven that religion and slavery walk hand in hand and they go a long way in the African story. In fact, some people have the opinions that Africans have adopted religious beliefs, both Christianity and Islam, much more than the westerners or Arabs who brought them to Africa. Someone said that the Bible and Quran used to were used to justify slavery. Then Africans made Christianity and Islam their paths to freedom. So modern opinions hold that Africans are highly religious but not spiritual, and I think that one has a popular vote. I think we've got lots and lots of scenarios to back that up. At least so far, these religions have done nothing to heal Africa of its chronic disease, the disease of disunity. It's so ridiculous when you see people doing unimaginable things in the name of God, in the name of religion. Come on, ah uh ah, -uh. why are you lying against God now? It's not good though. It's more than ridiculous the way Africans allow themselves to be misled by hungry ostlers in the name of prophets. Seven. Is it heaven? Yes. I have a woman here. Yes. What do you have to say about her? I should ask her who is Sibo? Sibo? Who is Sibo? Oh! Thank you, pardon. I think the biggest business in Africa today is the business of religion. Apart from politics or online fraud, scam, yow yow, religion has been proven to be the fastest way to make big money. If you want to eat it big in Africa, just go and be a pastor. We sure have big names to back that up, right? 
Right now, though, it's kind of hard to say how many foreigners live in Africa altogether, but as of 2018, there were almost half a million Chinese citizens in South Africa. In fact, there were 15 Chinese churches with an average congregation of 30 individuals. Those were actually documented by some South African researchers, but unofficial reports claim that the numbers are much more than that, as more and more foreign pastors or prophets can be seen establishing churches around Africa, you know, Kenya, Gambia, Zambia, even Ghana, and a few others. I don't know about Nigeria anyways. This one right here is said to be the first foreign pastor in Zambia, a South Korean by the name Daniel Young a supposed master's degree older in divinity from Gateway Seminary. He's so passionate about his church business that he preaches in Chimbemba, one of Zambia's primary language. <laughs> this 50-year-old pastor here is a Chinese pastor in Ghana, active for Jesus. Oh God. <laughs> This one's to in Ghana, equally winning souls for Christ and winning Ghana cities into their pockets too. <laughs> oh God, there's also a South African Chinese Covenant Church in South Africa. Waxing strong, almost 25 years now. You know, right now there's so much debate about the increasing and over friendly presence of foreigners on the African continent, especially the Chinese. There is the issue of um, the scramble for Africa between Europe, America, China, and some other countries. And, you know, that was one of the reasons why I started this series. Everybody wants Africa except Africans in the first place. However, there's a particular side to these stories that we've actually ignored or refused to acknowledge. China's presence in Africa is not new as far back as 1949, officially in 1956. But the relationship only intensified recently. According to a state council information from 2014, more than 53% of Chinese foreign assistance funds were directed towards 51 countries in Africa and the African Union. And China became Africa's trading partner in 2009. In fact, China is said to have contributed immensely to Africa's energy and health sector. The best hospitals in Zambia today are controlled by Chinese experts and doctors, who the people say are amazing people. But then, there is the fear of China and other nations wanting to take over Africa. For decades, Africans have had the opportunity to build their continents, the opportunity to take charge of their own affairs, the opportunity to cut out foreign parasitic influence, but the greed, corruption and selfishness won't let them. I tell you the biggest problem of the African continent is disunity. We can see that through the emphasis that has been placed by freedom fighters and black voices, you know, the emphasis on the need for African unity. Everybody's singing about African unity. Well, would the African people unite? Well, would the African people come together? This unity among the children every day. That is unity among the African people. Kuti, Miriam Makeba, Orlando Julius, Salif Keita, Yemi Alade, Angeli Kijo, Bob Marley, and a host of African voices, some of whom have come and gone, but they all add one message, or they all have one message, African unity. Africa is so divided that African countries go extra mile to protect their borders against other Africans, but they spread their legs wide to foreigners. Isn't it strange? Aliko Dangote was once asked about how he manages his businesses across Africa and he said that somebody like me, despite the size of our group, I need 38 visas to move around Africa and they give you these visas as if it's a favor. Just imagine. Today, China has secured direct equity interests in copper, coal, and manganese reserves in African countries. Take, for instance, China's earliest purchase of um, an 85% state of the Chambishi copper mine for about 20 million US dollars back in 1998 in Zambia. 
today that mine is said to have a continuous inflow of over 200 million dollars new investments just imagine where the african government has consistently failed foreigners are thriving really well I think it's time the African people started looking within themselves because most of Africans' problems are self-inflicted. Disunity, laziness, incompetence, greed, corruption. It has eaten so deep into the African culture that progress is almost impossible. Julius Malema of South Africa recently admonished African leaders to eliminate borders created by colonial masters. And he, alongside some other African leaders, proposed a United States of Africa. Ooh, 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 la la, USA. <laughs> Amazing idea, right? Sounds great. But impossible. Yes, very impossible. Not with the culture of hate and disunity amongst Africans. Look at Nigeria today. The regions and tribes cannot stay together in peace. Everyone wants to stand alone. How much more of the old Africa coming together? Look at South Africans. They kill all the black people. Meanwhile, they are slaves to white men in their own country. But it's okay for a white man to lead them. They don't want other black people like them in their country. Such sick mentality.